morning. My name is John McVail. If you don't know me, and uh, for all the new people, uh, welcome to Florence Church. Uh, I'm filling in for John as best I can. <laughs> in a storm. So how many of you have been in a storm? How many of you have been in that driving rain? You've been in the storm? <laughs> that driving rain, you're going down the road, and it starts to rain, and all of a sudden it's harder and harder, and your windshield wipers can't keep up with it. You can't see out there, everything's a blur. You probably should have pulled over. Life has a lot of storms. We have the storms of relationships. Sometimes you don't feel good. Sometimes your friends don't feel good. Sometimes you have trouble with relationship with your spouse. Relationship with your kids. You don't understand them. They don't understand you. You have the storm of your work. You got a oppressing boss, or you got deadlines you can't meet. You got security issues. You don't know if the company's going to stay in business or not. You got financial storms. Who hasn't had those, huh? And you don't know if your paycheck's going to make it for the whole month. You got an unexpected bill that you just don't know how you're going to pay. You have to take a job cut, a pay cut. You have the health storm. We've all had those too, huh? An unwelcome diagnosis, a lingering illness, broken bone, depression. Those are all storms in life that we face each day. Loss of voice. Loss of voice, yeah. <laughs> Nerves. <laughs> so life is full of storms. And it's how we face these storms and weather through these storms that determine what happens to it, with us. A favorite thing that I like in the Bible is um, where Jesus is with the disciples and they go out on a boat. And uh, I'm going to set this up a little bit. So Jesus had been preaching all day. He's had a really tough day. He was preaching in town. He gets, starts to leave town and the people are following him. They're pressing around him. He keeps telling them parables. They don't seem to understand it. Um, He's getting a little frustrated. He keeps telling him more things. And he finally works his way to the Galilee. And he has to get in a boat to get away from the crowd. So people don't want to get in the water and get their stuff wet. So he's actually in a boat. And he gives his last message. And he turns to his disciples and says, Would you like to read this with me? One day, Jesus said to his disciples, Let's cross to the other side of the lake. So they got into a boat, and they started out. As they sailed across, Jesus settled down for a nap. But soon a fierce storm came down on the lake, and the boat was filling with water, and they were in real danger. I've been in a storm, and I'm going to tell you about that storm. I was in the Navy for a while, and uh, our job was to pick up a boat on this particular time from Texas and take it to Charleston, and it was going to be cut into scrap and made into an artificial reef. Uh, we got the weather report that there was a hurricane brewing, so we picked up this boat as fast as we could and started heading out. The hurricane increased in strength faster than we could get very far, and now we were cut off from land. So we couldn't go back, and we had to go forward. Now, our ship was rather small, basically an ocean-going tugboat. And the ship we were towing was three or four times our size. It was massive. We had lots of power. It was no problem pulling it. We just were small. So we started towing this out there, and the waves are getting higher, and the sea's getting rougher, and we're looking at the weather forecasts, and you know, we've we're, got all the hatches battened. That means everything's all closed up, and we're pretty much watertight. But the sea is just unbelievable. You know, we're getting tossed about inside. Guys are falling down. Um, we're having a hard time doing the jobs. We can't serve any meals because you can't hold on to your plate. And the storm just gets worse and worse. We finally get to a point where the storm is so bad that this large ship that we're towing is pulling us backwards. Well, that's not a good thing in a boat when you're going backwards because now the water is coming up over your decks the wrong direction. And we're actually taking in some water in our ship. And uh, we're having intermittent power problems. And uh, the guys on board ship were all getting a little worried, a little nervous. Most of the people's never been through a situation like this, me included. We get to a point where we decide we've got to cut this boat loose. 
If we don't, we're going to sink. So one of the senior members on, on the ship who works on the deck, we got him all rigged up with his life vest, and we put some lines on him so we can kind of hold on to him in case he gets washed over. He starts to cut this cable. And this cable's massive. It's about six inches in diameter. So he's taking the torch, and he's cutting this cable, and he's working on it. And we've got tremendous strain on this cable, so he has to be careful. He can only cut it when it's slack, because if he cuts it while it's tight, he can get hurt. And uh, a wave hits us, a tremendous wave, and knocks him overboard along with the torches and stuff. And so us crew members who are holding on to him with these ropes, we're struggling to keep a hold of him. And we can't see him. He's gone. He's over the side of the ship. And we're pulling and pulling. And it's, but this, the force of the storm and the, and the waves and the wind and the water, is, it's, we're losing the line. And so we just keep pulling. And I remember praying. Uh, I remember praying that I didn't want the ship to sink. I didn't want to die. I didn't want these guys to die. And I didn't want that guy to be gone, lost, dying, dead. And somehow, miraculously, we, we got the strength and we did pull him back on board. He was unconscious, uh, bloodied up, beat up, probably had broken bones. And we got him inside and they got him down to the medical department and we closed up all the hatches again. And we knew we were in serious trouble, the captain did, because now we had a cable that was partially cut. We don't know how much strain it could take anymore. And so they evacuated that part of the deck. Just moments after that deck got evacuated, there was a tremendous crash. And you could hear this, this, the metal squealing as this cable just came back like a whip and cut through some of our side of our ship. And now we had a very serious problem now. Because now we couldn't maintain watertight integrity. We had a gash in our ship. And we thought this was going to be the end. It wasn't going to take long for us to sink. Have you been like that in your life sometimes? The problems facing you, your storms, overwhelming, you don't see the end in sight, and they just seem to get worse and worse. You're looking for the end in your storm. A couple things they learned in a storm is um, what not to do. Some of the things that you do in the storm of your life is uh, what not to do. If you've got financial problems, you probably don't want to spend your last dollar on something frivolous. You probably don't want to go to some place and get a loan that you're already in debt for. If you've got uh, relationship problems, you don't want to antagonize that more. You don't want to not communicate. If you've got health problems, you want to be better, but you're tired of taking the medicines, you're tired of doing the things the doctor told you to. Those are things not to do in the storm. You don't want to rock the boat. You don't want to make things worse. You don't want to take yourself down further the spiraling to, to defeat. You don't give up. You don't want to get so far down and lose so much hope that you just want to an end. You want to just file bankruptcy for your finances. You just want to divorce for your relationships. You just want to give up hope for your health. What to do in a storm? Cling on the promises of Jesus. You pray. You look for guidance. You ask for wisdom and knowledge. While we were in that storm, I prayed many times. And then we got so far into that storm and things seemed hopeless. Our engine room was flooded. We didn't have any engines. We only had a little bit of electricity. We got to the eye of the storm. There was quiet and peace. And a peace fell on me. And you could actually even feel it over the entire ship. We were done with that struggle for a while. We were safe for a while. Oh, we were flooding and we didn't have power, but now we had a chance that we could rebuild. We could make things better and, and get ready for the next battle that we had to go through. And like I said, we felt peace. I felt peace. And I had another storm raging in my life at that time. I was struggling with uh, the time that I'd spent in Vietnam. 
I was struggling with the, the news that my mother had terminal cancer and that I would probably have to leave the service. My dad wanted me to leave the service to help take care of my mom. I was struggling that uh, maybe God forgot about me. Why was all this stuff happening to me? And I didn't know if I could carry this burden. But at that time, when we got to the eye of the storm, I felt that peace. I knew that God was in control. I knew that no matter what happened, that God was in control. Whether we sank or whether we survived, I felt this peace that it was going to be all right. You need to invite Jesus in your boat when you have a storm. So we made preparations. We boarded up the areas that was flooding. We put sealant up there. Uh, we got the engine room working somewhat. We had some power. But we were ready for the next wave to come through as we got to the edge of the storm. And it wasn't easy. More guys got hurt from being tossed around. Uh, there was times we lost power. You saw that early video, how that ship was bouncing around. We were bouncing around like that. Yeah. Waves were coming over the top. Couldn't see. Our radar wasn't working. We didn't even know which direction we were going sometimes, but all we knew is we wanted out of that storm. And so we plowed forward. But everybody on board the ship had a renewed sense of hope. They just felt that we were going to make it. So the disciples went and woke up, woke him up, shouting, Master, Master, we're going to drown. And when Jesus woke up, he rebuked the wind and the raging waves. And suddenly the storm stopped. And all was calm. As we made our way back to port, crippled, um, once we got to port, there was actually a great relief. Once we could see the port coming and we saw the land and we're out of the storm, there was a great relief on everybody. There was actually some jubilation, some joy. We felt good. We felt safe. I felt personal safety. I felt personal victory. I felt calm and peaceness in my life at that point. And it wasn't going to mean that my life wasn't going to have turns later on. It certainly has. It was just one storm. We all have many storms in our life. And as we go through our storms in life, we have to know who to trust on. We have to know who to give our faith to. And we have to know that no matter what, we'll get through it. And if the worst happens to us, we still get to be in heaven. We still have Jesus. As you battle your storms each day, sometimes you feel like throwing the towel in, sometimes you feel like giving up, sometimes you wonder why. We don't have those answers all the time, but we have Jesus and we have faith we have a hope. This psalm verse was written probably a thousand years before the events that took place with Jesus and the disciples on the Sea of Galilee. It's uh, prophetic. And they cried, Lord, help me, they cried in their trouble. And he saved them from their distress. All we knew is, need to do is cry out. and He will help us. He promises that. Those are promises in the Bible, that he will be there for us. <clears throat> he calmed the storm to a whisper, and he stilled the waves. And that's what he can do in our lives if we let him do that. When we sit back and, and think about the events after we get through them, we're able to remark on how well things turned out often. And we know that a lot of that wasn't our doing. I look back on those events and I see that the danger we were in and how close that we were to dying and how we could have all perished. And yet, I'm here today. And as we go through our struggles and we feel like we're at the end of our rope, we just got to hold on and cry out to the Lord and ask for help. What will you do in your storm?